So I'm in the process of putting new tires on the front end of the backhoe. I have two jack stands on it and I don't really trust them to hold up a couple thousand dollar uh, tractor. I think I bought those jack stands at Harbor Freight for under 40 bucks. So I want to cut some cribbing to put underneath the front end of, end of the tractor also. And I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to use the Timber Pro. And these are the pieces of wood. I have three of these. They're uh, six by sixes, but they're actually five and a half by five and a half. And I'm just going to cut them into two and a half foot lengths. I have everything already marked out. And I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride for the very first couple of cuts I'm going to make with this new saw. Uh, it has been sitting in the barn the whole night for oh, since a couple days ago. So it's it was about 62 degrees whenever I woke up this morning. And figured let's do a cold start on this thing and then we'll get to cutting some of these uh, six by sixes. All right, so we're gonna put the on switch to on, pull the choke out and press the primer bulb in. One, two, three. And then I'm also going to put the, the saw is equipped with the decompression valve. So we're going to press that in, make sure the chain brake is off. And I'm going to give this thing a couple pulls till it fires and then uh, push the choke in. Well, actually pull the lever and um, see how it, see how it fires off. I have noticed this saw does have quite a bit more compression than the other Timber Pro there, orange one. I'm not sure how much more it has, but it's definitely a noticeable amount. And that rope is quite a bit harder to pull, so the decompression valve does come in handy an awful lot. I'm glad the saw has one. These 6x6s were actually, they were the box for my old swing set whenever I was a kid. And we, we saved them, thinking maybe someday they'll come in handy. And that day's finally come, so these 6x6s bring back a few memories from my childhood. I'm glad they're getting put to use. They were just sitting up in the barn in storage for... Oh boy, I think we got rid of the swing set whenever... Probably five or ten years ago, maybe. And... You see me uh, wiping the... Sides of the 6x6 six six there. And these... These timbers have some nails and stuff still in them, and I'm trying my best to not hit any of them with the brand new chain on the saw. Uh, this chain does seem to be better quality than the chains that come with the other Orange Timber Pro, so I like to see that. They're the semi-chisel, they're not the full chisel that I usually run. But I probably should have had something, some sort of clamping device or something that I can clamp these, the smaller pieces, into so that they don't move around a whole lot. This was the third time that I had actually filmed this video. For whatever reason, my, my cell phone that I take my YouTube videos with, it was overheating, like, a lot. I put the phone up to my, my cheek and I could, it was really, really warm. So I don't know why it does that sometimes. I, I need a better uh, camera phone to take my YouTube videos with. And 
This one, this gets me by. I don't know why this 6x6 here was painted. I don't remember any of them being painted, but my memory goes kind of fuzzy this far back. But I need one of those log holder stands, I guess is what it's called. I, I forget the company that makes them. It's like uh, Log Ride or, or something. And they actually have... Wrangler Star made one. They have, like, teeth and stuff, and you push the, the log through, and then it holds it. Maybe someday I'll build one. That'd be pretty cool. We also need a, a log arch. Many of you... I haven't really mentioned this in a video, but I'll mention it in this video. We have a, a 1948... Ford 8N, and now that we have a farm tractor, we can um, move logs and, and stuff. But I want to get a, a log arch, and then I can easily, more easily move logs than this trailer and the crane. It'll be faster and just a, an all around better setup. This chainsaw really goes through this wood without any problems. And might be a, a little bit overkill for just a little 6x6, but hey, it makes short work of cutting, cutting up these pieces of wood. I remember the days when I could not afford to buy even one new chainsaw. All I could ever afford was a used uh, Macaulay or home light or anything along those lines and then not that those are bad saws or anything but it is it's nice being able to afford a brand new saw and now I have four brand new saws well four that I bought brand new all in various CC ranges and uh, whatnot these two timber pros are the biggest saws I have and the I would not be able to afford even one of the steel or Husqvarna equivalent. They're around 62cc model. I think I mentioned this in a previous video or two, but they were was it the Husqvarna was like 550 to 600 or something, and the steel was like 750 to 850, something around around those prices and this Timber Pro can be bought for I think it was around 250 and the other one was the two I think I paid 168 dollars and five cents for the other one but you know I can get much more saw I can get the same amount of saw for way less money with the Timber Pro, so that's why I went with the Timber Pro. And I, I really seem to like their their saws and stuff. The next thing I want to get is a, a weed whacker with a, a pole saw, brush cutter, and stuff like that next in the coming years. I'll tell you what, that saw, whoo, man, does it have a lot of power. It didn't hesitate or anything cutting through these 6x6s. I think these are uh, pine or spruce or something, so they're not a real hard wood, but uh, no match for the timber press. So let's go and put these on to put these underneath the front of the backhoe. Uh, I also want to say uh, Timber Pro has uh, Facebook pages and I think they even have a Twitter and they're on Instagram, so uh, like follow and all that good stuff on there and I'll try to put links to their stuff in the description so you guys can help them out there also. Off we go to take these pieces of wood over and put underneath the front end of the backhoe. You guys may have seen this tractor in a previous video. This is my mid 80s Cub Cadet 582 Special on the Jeep trailer, all in the wood. So 
So here is the backhoe. You can see the axles are up in the air. There's no... Other than the jack stand supporting this, there's nothing else on the front. And you can see this big weight box. It's about three quarters full of concrete. So it, this is, I don't know how much this weighs, but it's, if I had to guess, so there's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, maybe 14, 14 inches wide. Actually, you know what? I have a tape measure here. But I don't know how much this weighs, and I kind of want to, yeah, 14, 14 inches by a little, about 30 and a quarter, and then... The box is about 33 and a half inches tall. And the concrete goes up about seven and three quarter inches down from the bottom, or from the top here. So let's put the cribbing underneath the backhoe here. And I'm sure this will be, this was much better than those cheap jack stands that I bought from Harbor Freight. It should take four of these six by sixes on each side. The axle is about it's about twenty-two inches to the bottom of this up to here. Of course, I'm going to try my best to square stuff up and try to get things as straight as possible. Oh, just a little. Just a little too tall. Well... We'll see how that goes. I think that something's better than nothing, right? And this other side might only take three. So now I'll sleep a little bit better tonight knowing that this tractor is not really going to fall off the jack stands. I have it in gear also. I apologize, it's a, I know it's a little dark in here. We don't have any electricity going to this building, so it's, uh, it is what it is. Boy. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to fit three of these on here. I might be able to find a piece of wood around here to to use for that. Um, but there you go. That's about as good as I can get it. So, Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll tell you that Timber Pro is quite a saw. It's definitely got lots of power. And the bar oiler seems to be bar seems to be oiling the bar just fine and the and oiling the chain also. So, I did notice it does not really leak bar and chain oil very much, which I'm very pleased to see because a lot of my other saws, the Chinese one especially, the little 45cc one, right now it's sitting in about a foot or a foot and a half of oil with the bar and chain oil that it's leaked out, and Timber Pro doesn't really seem to leak much, if any, bar and chain oil, so I'm really happy about that. So I hope everyone has enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll put those links down in the description. And I'll see you all in the next video. And I'll end with a little bit of the backhoe. Pretty sweet.